Welcome into another digital edition of Daily Wager. I am Doug Kazarian, joined by Anita Marks, and also the man with the beard, Preston Johnson. We got some MVP awards to talk about. Let's get right into it as Caesars posted odds. Obviously, uh, we got to start with the biggest offseason storyline. That's Tom Brady, 16 to 1 to make NFL history. He would break his own record as the oldest player to win the award, which would be 43. He's also be the first player in his first season with a new team to win it since Earl Morrill with the Baltimore Colts in 1968. As we know, it's typically a quarterback award, the last non-QB to win it. Vikings running back Adrian Peterson in 2012 went over 2,000 rushing yards. Overall, 16 running backs have won the AP NFL MVP. 42 quarterbacks, no receivers. The NFL has also had a long shot win the MVP the last handful of years. Four of the past five winners have had odds longer than 30 to 1 in the offseason. Lamar Jackson last year was once 40 to 1. Patrick Mahomes the year before that, 35 to 1. Now, both of those guys aren't sneaking up on odds makers this year. Lamar Jackson plus 650, Mahomes 4 to 1. Preston, if you had to bet, or would you bet either of these guys at those low numbers? I, I don't think you can now. I mean, it's easy to say you're paying a premium because the last two years, the numbers were so high. Even some other places, they were higher at some point in those off season. When you look at the actual projections here, at Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, both of them could do it again. It's just relative to price. How often are they going to do it? They're going to do it 20, you know, 17 to 20% of the time to break even on a bet like this. Health is always a concern. It was with Mahomes a year ago, and then it probably can be with the way Lamar Jackson plays. So for me, I'd stay away at this point. It's not worth doing. If I absolutely had to, because you did ask it first, I'd probably just go with Mahomes. You would go with Mahomes. I would too. Anita, if you had to, where would you go? Come on. We've been, ta- I've been talking about Lamar Jackson for weeks now. I know. Weeks I know. I mean, this, it, there's, the stars are aligning so properly, not only for this Ravens team, but for Lamar Jackson. I mean, let's be honest. His athleticism is otherworldly. I, I do believe we're going to see him pass the ball more this coming season. So what he passed for 3000 yards last year, I think that increases. He rushed for over 1200 rushing yards. I think it stays around a thousand. This offense only got better in the draft by drafting Dobbins and wide receiver Duvernay. Their offensive line returns. They are a top 10 offensive line. On top of that, their schedule is the easiest in the NFL and field Yates tweeted this out earlier today. Their travel, the fewest miles in with all the teams and all the teams, all 32 teams this season, only 6,000 miles. Just to compare, the Seattle Seahawks this season are going to have to travel 29,000. This is the lowest wow. mileage in four years in the NFL. All the stars are aligned properly. I think Lamar Jackson does a repeat performance. Yeah, can't fault you there. And obviously, plus 650, a lot better than four to one. My thing is, is I think John Harbaugh just kind of pushed the envelope last year kind of ran up the score to get that award in some high-profile national TV games, the Jets, the Rams game. Again, if I had to, I would go Mahomes. Okay, so that covers the chalk if we had to. Who, what about guys we want to bet on? Anita, you up first. Who would you take right now with these odds? Listen, if you recall, Doug, I'm going with the same guy I mentioned last year, and that's Carson Wentz. Quarterbacks typically always win the MVP. His odds right now, 35 to one. It fits that range in regard to the last four to four of the last five MVPs we've seen. On top of that, look, look at the season that Carson Wentz had last year. Do you know there were over 20 practice squad players that dressed for games because, <laughs> because they were so injury, they had so many, they were an infirmary. So now they trade for Marquise Goodwin. They draft Jalen Rager, John Hightower, Jalen Hurts. I'm really excited to see how they're going to utilize him on the offensive side of the ball. Let's assume that Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey can stay healthy. You've got the two tight ends with Ertz and Goddard. On top of the fact that you've got Miles Sanders, his second year, and they have a top five offensive line in the NFL and a ton of depth. It's just, it's just the talk about the stars lining up for Lamar Jackson just a second ago. The stars line up for Carson Wentz and this Eagles team to make a really great run, win the division, and, and compete to potentially win an MVP this year for their quarterback. Yeah, it's 35-1. Remember, essentially a couple of years ago, he was the favorite before he got hurt in December. One guy I keep coming back to is Drew Brees at 20-1. to Remember, a couple of years ago, he was right there with Mahomes the year Mahomes won the MVP. It just takes team success. Got to be one of those one or two seeds, it seems like. Saints are going to be loaded this year. Added Emmanuel Sanders. Brees' accuracy, as we know about over the years, yes, 
He's in his 40s. But I will remind everyone, he has never won this award. So in terms of a tiebreaker, he could be that sentimental pick. At 20 to 1, Preston, does at least intrigue you? You know, I'm in the camp of just because you haven't done it before doesn't you can't do it, right? Virginia basketball, Lamar Jackson winning the MVP, Mahomes, young guys. Look, when it's your 19th, 20th season in the league now that he's coming up on, and you've never done it before, and you're falling off for like 4,300 passing yards in 2017 after six or seven in a row where he threw for 5,000, then just 3,900 in 2018, then broke down a little bit with the injury last year. I, I'm not sure I can get behind it at the price of 20 to one, to be completely honest. All right. Well, let me interest you maybe in a 50 to one long shot. Okay. And that's Kirk Cousins. Now here, I talked about what's a quarterback award. We've touched on that, but team success is so important. You essentially need to be a one or a two seed. We don't have like we do in baseball when Mike Trout can win the MVP on a bad team. So it's basically like the quarterback because the margin of error in the NFL is so small. You need to be great in order to have a great team success. I think Cousins can do it. He is a great supporting cast. And I think, and I've said this before, without fans, I think he'll be better on the road, maybe in prime time. I think Cousins is better than people realize, and I've criticized him plenty, don't get me wrong. But at 50-1 to 1 on a team that could easily win the division, I got to take a piece of that. I'm not entirely sure I can get behind that 50-1, to 1, but how about his former OC, who is now taking over for the Browns, Kevin Stefanski, and Cleveland and Baker Mayfield at 50-1. to 1. Here, I need to give a shout-out to TA from Twitter. He's a Cleveland fan, but he threw out some great stats that I think line up. But first and foremost, everyone's talking about Baker Mayfield probably being out of the league in a year or two after that disaster season. The truth of the matter is they were hyped up. They vastly underachieved, and that's playing a role in his perception that he stinks. He was 19th in the NFL in QBR. Aaron Rodgers was 20th, Tom Brady was 17th, and Baker did it against the third toughest pass defense schedule in the NFL, according to DVOA. And now the Browns project to face the easiest set of pass defenses in the NFL. And then I mentioned Stefanski and his improvement, just more or less because Freddie Kitchens just completely mismanaged Baker Mayfield and the offense as a whole. Check this out. Baker Mayfield, he actually ranked number one in the NFL in the difference in his completion percentage and then yards per attempt on third down when the Browns ran play action versus when they didn't. They were elite when they ran play action. He had Nick Chubb, an elite running back behind him, a threat getting over five yards per carry. They just didn't run play action with Freddie Kitchens. Now they get Stefanski in there, who ran it the fifth most off in the NFL last year. When it's all said and done, I think lines up for people to buy a team that everyone is hyping last year and no one's talking about this year. The concern is that the Ravens and the Steelers are in the same division, and right now the current market projects them to be better than Cleveland. So to get enough wins to be in the MVP to discussion will be tough but not 50 to 1 tough at this price i gotta take a shot uh hey don't forget this is just a taste of what we have from uh the betting content let's check out espn.com slash chalk section all of us contributing to the best player prop bets that we each had also we got mike clay as well joe ford mod matthew berry and phil yates chipping in to the player prop bets that have all caught our eye this coming season and we also open the old history books best and worst ats seasons for every single NFL team. Preston has a feature on an incredible comeback in poker. Dive deep in that and then also just the latest in terms of the future book for the awards. Guys, thanks so much. Always fun to be talking 50 to 1 and 35 to 1 long shots.